Hello and welcome to another video. In today's video, I want to show you how you can build a marketing database in BaseRow and how to automatically track the success of the campaigns using an NNN workflow to fetch data from Shopify and to store the data automatically in the database. The reason I'm doing this video and this workflow is just from my own perspective and uh, how my own team works and roles. We don't really like to work with Google Analytics. That's um, often way too complicated and um, that's not a really useful tool in my opinion at least. And um, we work with another tool that's called Matomo for um, tracking of our websites. But this is also kind of overkill. I will use a simple example from a standard base row template that is basically a starting point to managing email marketing campaigns. We use something similar in production to work with our campaigns and uh, to track progress and how things are going. So in this video, you will learn how to use the email marketing campaigns template from base row. You will learn how to connect base row to NNN and we will fetch data from the Shopify API to get the UTM campaigns and sources and feed them directly into our base row database. So let's get started. The first thing you will need to get started is basically a base row account. On the base row website, you can just use the free plan to get started and um, this will be good enough to follow along this tutorial. I'll just quickly show you how we create the database we will be working on today. So I just go for create new and say from template and here I can go into content marketing and take the email marketing campaign. When I hit use this template, this database will be installed to my base row instance. So you can see here you have a very simple campaign management tool. So you have a campaign name, you have brand names, you have subjects, lines, you have images and so on and so forth. This is just a simple example to demonstrate the concepts I will be showing here. At first, I want to make some small changes to the template itself. I will explain why later on. So so I will just copy the campaign name to the clipboard and name this one campaign ID. And now I will create a new campaign name field again, create it and just take these values and move them over. And now I will just create IDs that are basically shorthands for the campaign name. Now I will set up a new table and uh, just paste table data and I will just call this one sale. And for the structure, this is this one has an order ID. This has a campaign content, medium, source, term, and the revenue. So we would just add the table. And here I would just edit some of the fields. The revenue, of course, needs to be a number with two digits and we allow negative here. And now I will change the campaign field. This one needs to be a link to another table and we connect the campaigns table here. And this checkbox will make sure that the relation is also made on the other side. And now what I can do here is I can just, I don't know, just create a sample order here, make this a 22 and get another one, maybe 44 here. And now when I get back to the campaigns, I can have a look down here. So here you see, here is the connection to the sales table. And what we could do now, for example, is we could just create a revenue field. We can make this a roll-up field that's based on our sales table and we take the revenue column. The roll-up function will be a sum and we take two decimal places. Now you can see here that uh, we got the revenue for our campaign. And the basic idea here is that we fetch orders daily from Shopify and automatically put them into the sales table and assign the correct campaign. And this will enable us to have a good overview about uh, how our campaign is doing over time and uh, how the sales are coming in based on the campaign. What you could do here in Base Row and uh, how we handle it is uh, you can build a tool 
where all your campaigns are managed. So the images, the texts and so on. In our company, this is how our graphics and marketing team works really. And an important part, of course, is to have an overview how good each campaign is doing. So just to make this more complete here, we will just add another one and take one over here, put this to 13. And when we head back to the campaigns, you can see that the fact that we use the roll-up field will automatically sum up the revenue values that are associated with this campaign. In order to fetch data from the Shopify API, we need to set up authentication for the NetN workflow tool to get data from Shopify. This time I will demonstrate this on one of our live systems because in a demo store I don't have enough data to really show how this can work out. We just go to settings and apps and sales channels. And now we make a custom app and say create an app. Just name this init and base row. And here we can just make our settings. So what we want this to do is to read orders and nothing else for now. And now we can create the necessary authentication tokens. So we go for install app and now we can use a token only once. And when we go into NNN into credentials, in this case, we cannot use the standard node for Shopify and NNN because we want to fetch very specific data from the API. So I will just add a credential for a header authentication. And in order to authenticate we need to send the X Shopify access token in the header and the token we have just created. Save this one. And now we can start building our workflow. At first, I will take a GraphQL node and here I sele select the header authentication and take the credentials we just created. And for the endpoint we want to call, we can just go back to Shopify to overview down here. And here we click on getting started. And this is the endpoint we will need. So, and here in the front, you can just put your Shopify domain name here. And when we get back to the Shopify documentation, we can just quickly fetch this query here and test if it's working. And this is working, this returns our store name and the URL and so on. So that's working. So what I would strongly recommend here is to install the GraphQL app for the admin API. The link can be found in the developer documentation. So you just hit this link and here you just enter your subdomain and uh, select the scopes that you want to allow for this app. I have this already installed. So what we can do here is we can interactively build queries for the GraphQL API from Shopify. So we can just go for the Explorer here and click on orders. And here we can just, for example, say we want the first 10 orders. And now you can see this will return the data. And of course, you can easily modify this here. So for our purpose, I want to download all orders from yesterday at once at a certain point in time. So we go for a query here and here we follow the search syntax from the documentation. So in this case, this, this means that uh, we get returned the orders that were created after the 1st February. And what the GraphQL API always wants it wants to know how many items to return. So I will just put the first 10 items here. And now you can see this was added to the query. And now this will return the first 10 orders. And now we can start adding fields we want to have. So for example, I want to have the order name because that's the order reference we are using internally. And here I want to get total received. This will basically be the revenue on the order. And now we can start to get the order into context of our marketing campaigns. Shopify offers something that's called the customer journey summary. And here I will take the first visit and get the ID just for example now. And here you can see how the response is uh, structured. So we get the order information here and here we start with the customer journey summary. We get 
more information about the first visit of our customers. So that's actually how, how we want to follow this because uh, we always track the first visit because this indicates how the customer came to us in the first place. And here I can also add some more fields. So I will just add the source and the referral URL. And I want to know the landing page the customer came to. You can see that uh, we got back the information we just requested. And now we can start adding the UTM parameters. So we have the campaign here, the content, the medium, the source and the search term. And if we find an order where UTM parameters are present, we can see here, this is coming from a campaign named All Products and uh, the medium is uh, shopping and the source is Google. So for those who don't know, UTM parameters are key value pairs you attach to a URL when you set up the URL that's supposed to be hit when the customer clings, uh, clicks on a Facebook ad and so on. And there are tools from Google and other ones. For example, this one is from Matomo and you can just fill out a form and give the, the different parameters and let this generate a URL. When we have a closer look, this is very simple. This is actually just key value pairs that are concatenated with an end sign. What we have done now is we actually built the query we will need in our NNN workflow. So we can just paste the query in here and you can see we get the same data. And of course, what we want to do here is we are using a static date right now and this should be basically replaced by yesterday's date. So we can find help about this in the NNN docs. And um, here's a clear example how to do this with an expression. So I will just copy this one over from the docs and set this one to an expression and go into the editor. And now I just paste in the expression from the documentation and I want to subtract only one day. So I will re replace the seven by one. And of course, what we need to add here is the created at for our search query. And now we can test this step. And now we get all the orders from yesterday. Right now we are getting a big data chunk from the Shopify API that's usable in this form, but there's no need to keep this complex structure. So we will do something about this in NNN to make it a little bit more easy and maintainable. So what we can do here is we take the split out node and here we can just drag the list of edges over here and test this step. And as you can see right now we have a more simple structure here. And on the next node, we will make this even more simple. So we take this ID from Shopify and we take the order reference. And here we can just copy over the campaign content, medium source and the term. In this special item, we don't have all of them available, but uh, we will just take one we already have here as a source and just build our expressions accordingly. And the term is the last one. And as you can see, we cannot count that we always have all the values present. So this one will evaluate to null, as you can see over here. And what we can do about this is we just add a little bit of JavaScript here. And this will basically put out the value. And if it doesn't exist, it will give an empty string. And I don't want to keep the whole structure here. So I can just tell this node to abandon the input fields. And now you can see we got our ID, we got our order ref, and here we have the values from the U UTM parameters. And as you can see, these ones are empty strings in case there is no reference. And now we can start adding these ones to base row. So we want to create a new row. And for base row, 
We also need credentials. So you just set your host name. In my case, that's just the URL of my base row instance. If you are using the base row cloud, you can just take this URL. Here, I just put my username and get my password. And here you can see it has already fetched the databases we can interact with. So I take the email marketing campaigns and take the sales. And now we can map our fields here. So and now we test a step. This will throw an error because as you might remember, we have set up the campaign field in base role to be connected to the other table and uh, we cannot give it an empty string here. So the solution in this case is pretty easy so far. So we can just put this one over here. And here we just put an if node. In the if node, we want to check for the campaign really, because how we have planned and built this one, this database and sending data to this database without having a campaign doesn't really make sense. What we want to test for in the if node is if the campaign exists. So we put this over here. And right now how it's configured, we had set this to output the value or to put an empty string. In order to check on the if node for a non-existent string, we need to change our expression here. And now we can go for the if node. And here you can see we get 15 items in the true branch and 65 items in the false branch and all the items in the true branch are having a campaign assigned and now we can just test our final step here in base row we go for test step so in the base row node this will throw an error because base row expects a value in the connected field for the campaign. And if we send in data over the API that doesn't exist in the connected field, it will throw an error. So I will just quickly fix this. Just get back to my F node. And now I will just change the IDs here. And now we can test it again. And now this has succeeded. And if we head back to our base row sales table, you can see the table has been populated with the different values. And now when we go back to our campaigns and have a look at our revenue values, you can see that the base row rollup column has automatically summed up the revenue we have created with these campaigns. So that's just a starting point how you can use nnn base row and the shopify api to build powerful solutions for your company as you can see these solutions pretty much go completely without coding knowledge we got very far just by clicking together a graphql query and uh, connecting everything over nnn of course when you know some programming, there is really a lot more you can do because uh, you can use code nodes in NNN, for example, and you can make really advanced things. And uh, base row, for example, is pretty strong uh, creating internal applications because uh, you could just make your own CRM or you can make like we tested a marketing database and uh, we use it for example for managing our product data and um, with this we also use nnn workflows to automatically translate text fields and so on so there's really a lot you can do with these tools so that's all from me today and have a good time bye bye